hidden war rages in the quiet corners of forests, gardens, ponds, and garages, where tiny hunters face off against formidable predators in battles you've likely never heard described. These are fights not fueled by size, but by venom, cunning, and opportunity. Creatures that many people dismiss or ignore are often the deadliest in their own right. This is a story of the underdogs, spiders, centipedes, dragonflies, waterbugs, and snakes themselves, locked in a cycle of predator and prey, ambush and escape, triumph and tragedy. Stay with us, because in these tales, what seems small can take down what seems terrifying. Before we go deeper, smash that like button if you believe there are more predators than we think, and if you haven't already, subscribe to Wild Spot, so you don't miss the next incredible showdown. Also, tell us, which creature would you least expect to be a killer in this world? In 2021, two researchers, the arachnologist Dr. Martin Niffler from the University of Basel and herpetologist J. Whitfield Gibbons from the University of Georgia, published a meta-analysis that changed what scientists long assumed. Spiders catching and consuming snakes is far more common than anyone realized. They collected 319 documented cases from scientific journals, media reports, old naturalist writings, and even social media and field photos. Here's what they found. These incidents happen on every continent except Antarctica. The majority occur in Australia and the United States, roughly 80% combined, though they're found elsewhere too. The snakes caught are usually young, freshly hatched or juvenile, with an average length of about 25 to 30 centimeters. The smallest are under 6 centimeters, the largest reported is nearly 1 meter long. Spiders from over 40 species, across 11 spider families, and prey from more than 90 snake species, spanning at least 7 snake families. Perhaps most unexpected, even snakes that themselves are venomous, members of Elapidae and Viperidae, show up among the victims. The spiders winning are often those with extremely potent neurotoxins or very strong web structures. Australia remains a hotspot for such lethal meetings. Among the most dramatic are encounters between the eastern brown snake, one of the world's most venomous land snakes, and the redback spider, known as Latrodectus aselti, a member of the widow family. Eastern brown snakes carry venom that attacks blood clotting, can cause massive internal bleeding and cardiovascular collapse, and, if untreated in humans, can kill in minutes. Their reputation is fierce. Yet, when young, they are vulnerable. Redback spiders build tangled webs that are deceptively strong. When a juvenile brown snake becomes ensnared, those sticky webs tighten with every struggle. The redback creeps in, injects venom, and when it works fast enough, the snake's defenses fail. The web, the bite, and the venom combine in a deadly tactic. Though detailed video evidence of particular brown snake versus redback confrontations remains rare, the recent meta-analysis confirms many reports of redback and other widows taking down brown snakes or their juveniles. It's not all tangle web ambushes and venomous fangs. Some spiders don't build webs, some don't wait for prey. They hunt. Tarantulas are among the strongest and most physically imposing of the spider world. They use ambush, stealth, speed, fong depth. In 2015 and later observations, large tarantulas have been documented attacking snakes up to a foot or more in length. Sometimes the skin is shredded, the body paralyzed, and the meal taken with slow, methodical feeding. Orb weavers are another group that surprises people. Their abundance in web building, sometimes making large circular webs with strong silk, allows them to trap prey beyond insects, frogs, bats, birds, and young snakes. One golden orb weaver in Florida was documented catching a yellow or green snake about one meter long. These spiders are less venomous than widows but compensate with web strength and size. In most of these confrontations, venom is what tips the scales. Spiders that take on snakes often possess toxins that interfere with the snake's nervous system, sometimes also with its circulatory system. Widow spiders, family theridity, are especially notable. Their venom produces alpha latrotoxin, which targets vertebrate nerve junctions. Even when snakes themselves are venomous, the spider's venom often works more quickly, or at least in ways that avoid triggering an effective defense. Putting together potent toxins, well-constructed webs, and timing, striking while prey is entangled or vulnerable, creates an almost unfair advantage. Recent studies also indicate that many spider venom components effective against snakes are understudied. The meta-analysis suggests that beyond widows, many spider species capable of killing snakes likely use previously uncharacterized or little-known neurotoxins or venom enzymes that act against vertebrates. One pattern keeps showing up, 
young snakes are by far the most common victims. Freshly hatched or juvenile snakes lack mass, strength, and experience. Their small size lets webs entangle them more easily. Their physiological systems succumb faster to venom. But young doesn't always mean tiny. Some medium-sized juveniles get caught, sometimes up to one meter in length. The larger the snake, the more likely it is to escape, or the spider must adapt. Stronger web, more venom, more silk wrapping, and targeting vital places, like head or nervous system, early. Also, chance plays a role. An unlucky moment of tangling, a fall into a web, or being distracted can make a difference. Spiders are not the only unlikely predators in this venomous landscape. Several other arthropods and insects have been documented fighting, and often winning, against snakes or against other venomous threats. Giant centipedes, particularly in Southeast Asia, are known to attack snakes, sometimes even large ones, especially when the snake is vulnerable, e.g., laying eggs or young. The centipede will coil around, bite with its venomous claws, and immobilize. Observations in Thailand have recorded Scolopendra species attacking snakes mid-reproduction, wrapping tightly, and delivering venom. Praying mantises offer yet another twist. On Guam, a mantis, Hyorodula species, was filmed attacking a brown tree snake, sinking its forelegs into the opponent, and dragging the snake down, even while the snake tried to escape. Venom doesn't help for mantises, they rely on brute force and speed, but some species are surprisingly bold, taking down vertebrates when opportunity allows. Giant waterbugs lurk underwater or cling to plants at water edges. When dragonfly nymphs or small snakes wander nearby, one swipe from their powerful front legs and a stab from their proboscis, and the prey is paralyzed, dissolved, and consumed slowly. This kind of external digestion, injecting the enzymes, then sucking up liquefied tissues, is remarkably similar across spiders, waterbugs, and centipedes. When the meta-analysis counted 319 incidents of spiders eating snakes, roughly half of those involved widows or spider species in the Theridae family. It's clear they dominate snake predation statistics. Why? First, their web architecture. Strong, tangled webs that often extend to the ground, dense with sticky silk fibers. These are perfect traps for snakes, which often crawl or fall into ground-based webs. Second, their venom. Widows like Latrodecta species produce a venom rich in toxins that affect vertebrate nervous systems, fast-acting once injected. When a snake is immobilized well, the widow spider can wrap it, inject venom, and feed. Even though many widow spiders are small, often around one centimeter in body length, they can kill prey many times their own size. Third, opportunism. Many of these incidents are not planned hunts but opportunistic kills. The snake becomes entangled, and the spider accepts the food. It doesn't chase the snake over distance, it lets the environment do part of the work. Since the 2021 meta-analysis, many in the field have asked, how often do these events go unreported? How much do climate change, habitat loss, or prey shift affect how often spiders interact with snakes this way? Some early data from ecological monitoring suggest that as forests fragment and urban edges expand, encounters between snakes and spider webs may increase. Young snakes exploring or escaping disturbed habitats are more likely to come into contact with spiderwebs in gardens, around buildings, and in debris. Also, warmer temperatures may alter venom metabolism, meaning some spiders' venom might act faster or slower depending on local conditions, affecting outcomes. There is ongoing work to isolate and characterize venom compounds in non-widow spider families that have shown the ability to kill snakes. Researchers in various labs in Asia and South America are collecting venom glands from orb weavers, large wandering spiders, and even some ground-dwelling species. The goal is to discover neurotoxins or cytotoxins that work against vertebrates, which might illuminate medical research, antivenoms, nervous system function, and deepen our understanding of ecology. Also, newer reports 2022 to 2024 show more incidents involving venomous snake species, not just small, non-venomous colubrids. Rattlesnakes, coral snakes, elipids, and vipers, all are occasionally prey when young or vulnerable. These cases are rare, but they confirm that even dangerous snakes aren't immune. It's not always spiders versus snakes. Sometimes snakes are the hunters, sometimes other predators get involved. There are instances where centipedes, mantises, or waterbugs attack snakes, or snakes swallow centipedes that fight back from inside. One documented scene in Macedonia showed a viper that had swallowed a centipede almost entirely. The centipede, alive inside, 
had gnawed out so much that it looked like it was wearing the snake's skin. Both eventually died. These fights are grotesque, yes, but also instructive. They show that when venom, strength, and chance meet, no creature is guaranteed victory. These battles, strange as they are, have implications beyond cool videos. For example, if spider predation on young snakes is more common in certain areas, that could reduce local snake populations, which in turn might increase insect or rodent populations, since fewer snakes to control them. Conversely, spider declines, due to habitat loss and pesticide use, might remove a check on those young snake numbers. Venom evolution might also be shaped by these engagements. If spiders routinely feed on vertebrates, there may be evolutionary pressure increasing potency in spider toxins or selecting web structures more suited to large prey. On the snake side, there might be selection for behaviors or skin toughness that reduce the chance of getting entangled or increase resistance to spider venom. Finally, human impacts, urbanization and climate change may increase the number of snake spider encounters. Grow more walls, roofs, debris, and garden clutter. Spiders build webs, young snakes wander, encounters rise. Warmer weather might make both spiders and snakes more active at times when they'd otherwise be dormant. If you were tiny like a juvenile snake, what would you fear most? Coming across the web of a widow spider at night, encountering a fast-moving water bug in water, or running into a giant centipede in leaf litter? Drop your answer in the comments. There are no wrong answers, only stories. Also, if you like watching creatures taking down enemies much bigger than themselves, hit share so more people can see these wild, natural battles. One reason these extraordinary battles don't make headlines more often, they are hard to observe, document, and verify. Many happen at night, under cover, or in remote areas. A snake caught in a web might die quietly, no one sees the fight. Even when videos exist, details like species identity, size, age, and venom type are often missing. The meta-analysis stepped into this gap by not just counting peer-reviewed studies, but also collecting reports from field biologists, naturalists, social media posts, and news stories. This broader net reveals many more incidents than would be known via academic literature alone. Still, scientists warn that biases remain. More reports from places with active naturalists, Australia, USA, and fewer from remote regions, tropical forests, and islands. So when you watch a video online of a spider and a snake, there's a chance it's part of this larger, unknown war. Some studies show that younger snakes have less developed physiological defenses, their small bodies mean venom spreads quickly. Spiders that inject venom into the head or central nervous system regions gain a faster kill. Also, the structure of the web matters. A web that supports the snake's weight, prevents escape, but allows the venomous bite to land, is key. Newer genetics and proteomic studies are trying to map exactly which toxins in spider venoms are effective against snake physiology. Some are general neurotoxins, affecting nerve signal transmission, but others target muscle contraction, or even the blood clotting system. Research in 2024 to 2025 has revealed new peptide components in orb weaver and wandering spider venoms that show moderate vertebrate toxicity in laboratory tests. These may not be extremely lethal to humans, but they are enough to paralyze or kill small snakes. On the flip side, snake venom and the immune system are under pressure. Young venomous snakes likely rely on rapid growth, aggressive behavior, or hiding to avoid dangerous encounters. Some species may have slight resistances or behaviors, thrashing, biting, that reduce the chance of a spider bite landing properly. One of the strangest documented incidents, so far, involves a centipede attacking a snake that was laying eggs. The centipede wrapped itself fully around the snake, delivering venomous strikes. The snake, burdened by eggs and unable to escape fast, was overwhelmed. This shows that it's not always physical size, but condition and timing that determine outcome. Another case. A snake swallowed a centipede, but instead of being killed immediately, the centipede fought back from inside, gnawing through internal tissue. The fight was brutal. In the end, both perished. It looked almost like a horror film. Then there are water bugs biting birds, turtles, or frogs, or even tiny snakes that swim near them. Outside digestion, paralysis, and immobilization all echo the same pattern we see in spiders. Why should we care about these wars of venomous animals? Because they remind us how complex ecosystems are, and how even the smallest creatures play big roles. Some thoughts for us. Research and conservation. Many of these predators, spiders, centipedes, etc., are sensitive to habitat change. 
If they decline, whole predator-prey balances shift. Medical Science Understanding how spider toxins work against vertebrates may help anti-venom design, nerve repair, and even neurological research. Public Perception Spiders and snakes are often feared, but knowing they also fight among themselves, and sometimes spiders win, may shift the narrative away from evil beast toward respect for survival strategies. Biodiversity Discovering new venom compounds could mean new species yet undescribed, since many spider species remain poorly studied. Warmer climates, expanding urban zones, and shifting habitats may bring these battles into closer proximity with humans. Either more encounters seen, or more conflicts in places we live. These are not just freak accidents. The spiders, mantises, centipedes, waterbugs, and snakes embroiled in these deadly showdowns are participating in an ancient, ongoing war. One where venom, silk, speed, strength, youth, and chance all matter. Where sometimes the underdog wins, and sometimes the predator becomes prey. The next time you see a spider web in your garden, or a centipede scuttling in the leaves, or a dragonfly skimming a puddle, remember, beneath the silence, there might be conflict. Tiny warriors, using tiny weapons, fighting huge enemies, and sometimes, winning. If stories like this thrill you, share this video with someone who thinks spiders are just harmless pests. Subscribe so you don't miss today's unseen battles of nature. And let us know, which venomous animal would you least want to cross paths with?